Hey, everybody. Welcome. Hey, guys. Happy, uh, I almost said happy Wednesday. It is Thursday, right? <laughs> okay, I'm out of the office, if you can't tell, and I apparently already forgot what day it was. So, awesome. Well, Angel's going to kick us off. While she does, if you would put in the chat box where you're located and what your position is, and then what attracted you to this webinar today? That would be awesome. So Angel's going to kick us off and then I'll jump into our content today. Yes, thank you so much, everyone. And welcome to today's webinar, Three Tips to Increase Conversions with your MAPS coach, Anna Kruger. Please note this meeting is being recorded and will be available within 24 hours on the MAPS group YouTube channel. You may access the YouTube channel from your Zoom confirmation email and we will also share that link in the chat momentarily. Currently, everyone is on mute and we do value group participation. So we ask that if you have any questions for your coach, please type them into the chat box located in the taskbar at the bottom of your screen. Your questions will be addressed by your coach throughout your webinar. Following the meeting, if you have any questions about today's call or coaching programs, please email us at fasttrackkw.com. That's all for me, Anna, take it away. Awesome. Well, hey, hey, Alyssa, I see you in Elk River, Minnesota. I was just there. And I think that's a small place. So I had to call that out. I realized how many places I've lived because as you guys are typing, I'm like, ooh, Charlotte, I've lived there. Ooh, North Carolina, I've lived there. <laughs> so I, I recognize where a lot of you are from, Northern Virginia. Awesome. So good to have you guys with me today. Today, we're going to jump right in and we're going to talk about how do you start a phone call so people do not want to hang up on you. Then we're going to talk about what do you do if they say, uh, I'm actually really busy. Can you just call me later? Which can we all just agree that's probably not true because they picked up the phone, right? Basically what they want to say is, oh crap, I didn't know it was a realtor, but they, but they don't say that. So instead they say, oh, okay, I'm actually busy. Can you just call me later? That's probably not true. So we're going to talk about how do you handle that scenario very tactfully so that you're not obnoxious about it. Um, and then we're going to talk about how do you start getting into a client's motivation. Sound good? Cool. Um, if we have time at the end, which I think we will, we'll open it up to any questions you guys have around lead gen, lead conversion. Um, and I know sometimes in a class, it's easy to wonder who is this person and why am I listening to her? So for those of you that don't know me, just real quick, I used to be a high school teacher in Baltimore. I said I would never do business or sales. Here I am. And um, these language patterns are what turned it for me. So my first several months on the job, I was not performing. I was about to get fired. And I thought I need to figure this out. And so I started learning some language patterns. And as soon as I got these language patterns down, my career shifted and it has just been on an upward trend ever since. So these patterns will help you whether you're a team leader. I saw some team leaders in here, which is awesome. Uh, basically, if you talk to anyone on the phone, this should help you out, okay? So first we're gonna talk about the call opener and I'm gonna ask y'all to trust me. <laughs> so usually when I teach this, people will think, and I totally get it, this is so basic. Why is she spending so much time on this basic thing? And then in every class I teach, after I give people a minute to work on it, people are like, wow, that was so much harder than I thought. So will y'all just trust me on this and stay with me here as we talk about the call opener? And then um, I actually want you guys to write one while we're on the phone together. So we'll, we'll do that. Okay, so the way that you're going to do this is you're going to open the call and you're going to say your name or their name. The order doesn't really matter. Just identify them and you. If you don't know who they are, don't do the whole like, I was looking for the owner of blah, 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 because it does sound very cold call like, and we don't, we don't really want that. So what I like to do is just say, hey, you know what, I am not sure who I need to talk to, and I'm hoping you can help me. And I want to hear from you, you all. Why do you think we say, I'm hoping you can help me? What is the reason for that? And I love participation, so you can unmute or just use the chat box. Either way is fine. You're looking for them to participate in the communicate the conversation of the phone call. Yeah, I want them to help help me with the solution, right? And yeah, a lot of you are typing it in. Thank you, Sandra. A lot of you are typing in that people like to help people. They like to help people, and so that's what that's why I say I'm hoping you can help me. So I'm going to say my name, and then I'm going to say their name. Then what I'm not going to do is say how are you. So let me let me ask you all. All of you have a response to this. If I say how are you, what do you say? Click. <laughs> yeah, click. Jason, Jason, I've talked to you before. Hey. <laughs> I've experienced that. There you go. 
right? It's always the like, good, how are you? And I'll do this at the grocery store. I'll say, I'm good, how are you? And then I keep walking. And I'm like, Anna, I don't do that. It's just such a default, right? It's a filler. But let me ask you guys, why do we say, how are you? There's a reason we do it beyond it just being habit. Comfort. Feedback. Yeah, feedback, comfort. Um, maybe we just wanna build some rapport. And so that's what we're doing to build rapport. But what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna instead say, thank you so much for taking my phone call. Um, gratitude is one of the highest forms of communication. And if I said to someone, thank you so much for taking my phone call, they're kind of a jerk now if they hang up, right? And so it, it actually will help you have more people engage and stay on the phone with you. So, so far we have, you know, hey, Jason, it's Anna. Hey, thank you so much for taking my phone call today. Just real, real quick. Um, then you're going to step four, reference the source. So when I'm referencing the source, what I'm going to do is tell them why I'm calling. So I might say, hey, I'm calling you because I see that you have a house for sale. Maybe they have a house for sale by owner. Or maybe I'll say, hey, I'm calling you because you were on our website last night checking out houses. But you want to give them a reason you're calling. Um, one reason I like this, guys, can we all agree this would work for everyone? There's no one this wouldn't work for. If you're circle calling, if you're open house calling, if you're sign call, or if you're responding to a sign call, maybe someone left you a voice message, you can use this for everyone. And I want to ask y'all, how long does it take to get to mastery? How many hours? I think a lot of you probably know this. 2,000. Yes. A whole bunch of you mouthed it the same timing Austin said it. it that was kind of cool. <laughs> it looks like you said that in unison. Yeah, 10,000 hours of, to get to mastery. So why would we want to have five different openers for five different sources, right? Now you have 50,000 hours to get to mastery. We don't want that. And so this opener works for everyone. And that's part of why um, it works is you, you can master it a lot faster. So you're going to say your name. You're going to say their name. Then you're going to say, hey, thank you so much for taking my call today. Then you're going to tell them why you were calling them. And then the fifth and final thing is you're going to ask them an open-ended question specific to their motivation. Now, let me tell you what that's not. What that's not is, how can I help you today? That's not asking about motivation. That's a common one, which is why I wanted to say it. Um, anybody here like Starbucks? Yes. I, guys, there's a Starbucks five minutes from my house, and I just went on vacation for 10 days, and when I came back, they were like, oh, wow, how are you? We haven't seen you in so long. I go to Starbucks a lot, okay? And it's because I miss people, and I work from home, so I go to Starbucks. So I'm in line at Starbucks not all that long ago, and I told the barista what I wanted. I always get the same drink, and she said, how would you like me to make that for you? And I thought, I don't know, like, so I'm paying $5 because I don't know how to make this at home. It's that's why I'm getting $5. And the thing is, I don't know what I don't know, right? I don't know the inner workings of Starbucks drink making. So when she said to me, how would you like me to do that for you? I, I one felt like a fool and two, I had no idea how to answer her. So can we all just agree if someone has talked to you for less than 10 seconds, they have no idea what you can offer them. They have no idea the value that you have. They don't know what you can do for them as a realtor or an ISA or a team leader. So if you start it with, how can I help you? They're flying blind into that and it's not gonna lead to a high quality conversation. Everybody tracking with that? If it gets too noisy, will you let me know? There's a boat <laughs> being very loud right over the dock. Okay, um, I'm joining y'all from on vacation today. Okay, so here's what this is gonna sound like, and I'll do it a couple different ways. And then I'm going to give you a moment to write your own call openers and have some of you read them out to me to make sure that we're all on the same page. So here's what it sounds like. You know, hey, Austin, it's Anna Khan from the Haro Group, Keller Williams. Hey, thank you so much for taking my call today. And I'm calling because you were on our website last night. I'm so curious, what has you thinking about moving? I just jump right into it, okay? Um, I'll do this another time. So, hey, NJ, it's Anna Khan from the Haro Group. Hey, thank you so much for taking my call today. I'm calling because I see that you have a house for sale by owner, and I'm curious, what has you thinking about moving? You just go right into it. And that is the tonality I like to use. You don't have to use the same tonality, but what you don't want is to sound like a robot. <laughs> so smile, you know, you might have done that 20 times already today. 
pretend it's the first time. So what I want y'all to do is write your opener real quick. And this is where people then come back and they're like, uh, that was a lot harder than I thought. And I'm gonna have some of you read it out. And the reason why is some of you will have maybe like a closed question that 10 other people on this call have, and I can give you feedback and help all of you correct it, okay? So we want an open-ended question about motivation. If you need help with that, a good um, opener for open-ended are things like what about that is, what about moving is important to you? What's caused you to think about moving? Anytime you use words like what's important to you or what, um, what about that matters to you, those are all motivation type questions. For clarity, we're calling a warm lead, right? This is not a cold Anybody. call. Yeah, I should probably have clarified this a little better, Jason. So mm -hmm. I'm imagining you're writing like a template. So you might have like high blank right now for your template. So high blank, this is Jason calling from Keller Williams. Thanks for taking my call. I'm calling you because blank. And then you just fill it in. So you can use it for cold calls. You can use it for warm calls. You can use it for any of that stuff. Okay, cool. By the way, I love how per participatory you all are today. <laughs> It's like, how do I say that? I, I'm on vacation brain, y'all. Okay, <laughs> who has an opener that you want to read out to us? I'll, I'll do mine. Okay, thank you, Whitney. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, David. My name is Whitney Jamison with the Holloway Home Group, Keller Williams. Thanks for taking my call today, by the way. I saw you on our website looking up properties, and I was wondering what motivated you to look for homes today. That's perfect. I would not change one single thing. That was perfect. I love it. And I like how you like, th by the way, thanks for taking my call. That sounded really good. So any you could use that every time for everyone. You'll just change the name and the reason you're calling. That was really good. Cool. Okay, who else has one? Let's hear one or two more. I can go. I have one, Anna. I love this. Okay, I don't know who that was, but go ahead. Sandra, maybe? Oh, sure. Um, okay. Here, I'll start. Um, hi there, Anna. It's Sandra Kress with uh, Keller Williams South Park. Anna, thank you for taking my call. And I hear that you're moving. Why are you moving? Good, very good. That sounds awesome. So I have one feedback for you and I actually forgot mm -hmm. to teach this. Can I give you a feedback? Yes. Okay, all of that sounded great. The last question was for sure open-ended about motivation, but have you all ever had a training where they tell you the, the question why can put people on a defensive? Like the actual question, W-H-Y. I used to use it all the time and I've heard enough teachers say it now that I believe that there's research behind and they say there it's been researched. So what you can do, Sandra, is change that question, just take off the word why and just say what about is usually a good replacement. So what would that question be now? How would you change it? Um, I hear that you're moving. What about you moving is motivating yeah. you or something? Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. And thank you, Sandra. This is why I wanted people to read it out because I guarantee you with this many people on the call, others had a why question. So thank you. Okay, I think there's one other person I heard their voice wanted to read. Susan, was go me. ahead. Oh, oh just, Susan, sure. just, we'll have Susan go first. Okay. Are there more than one Susans or are you talking me? You, I'm okay. talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Anna, uh, this is Susan Bay. And thank you so much for taking my call. The reason why I called is because you left me a message on my um, sign. And I was wondering, what about the house interest you? Good, very good. Awesome, you guys are getting it. I do wanna make one tweak on that one as well. And we go, just so you know, in the class Mastering Inside Sales, we go really deep into how to dig into someone's motivation. So you get like a whole hour on this one thing, how to get into motivation. So Susan, you haven't had that. So um, I'm gonna tweak your question a little bit. Your question was, what about the house interested you or something like that? Mm -hmm. Make it more about moving in general. Because okay. if you ask about the house specifically, we all know the house might not be available, right? Sure. And then their answer will also be, you know, I like that it was three bedrooms, two bath or whatever. And I more wanna know why do they even wanna move in the first place? Okay. So just make it a little bit broader to not be about the house, but more why they want to move. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anna, can I go? Yes. And actually, well, this will be the last one. Joseph, are you okay if I have Jason go? Since I know I've seen you in class a whole bunch. I feel like you got this. Okay. Because I do want to then transition after Jason to um, how do you, what do you do if they're like, I'm busy? Call me later. Okay. So Jason, go ahead. You're the last one. Cool. 
Hi, Anna. Thanks for taking my call. This is Jason with Keller Williams Realty. I see you've recently registered on our website. Out of curiosity, if you were to make a move, what would that mean to you? I love it. It's great. Ooh. You guys got this down. Great. Joseph has been in class. Usually people don't get it this quick. So maybe it's because it's Thursday. I don't know. Great job. <laughs> All right. Nice job, everyone. Okay, so now let's go on to what do we do if they say, oh, I'm really busy, call me later. Now, first, maybe they really are, right? Maybe they are waiting for a doctor to call them with some sort of test result or something. So they picked up the phone for a number they didn't recognize and they actually are busy. So we do wanna have a way to figure out if that's true or if they're just basically like, oh man, I didn't know it was you. So we gotta figure out what to do, okay? So what we're going to do is it's called a stall pattern. And we're going to just focus on one stall today. Um, real quick, the difference between a stall and an objection, I'm just going to put this whole slide up. We spent a whole hour on this in Mastering Inside Sales as well. I'm just going to give you the quick 10-minute version. Is that good with everybody? Um, OK. Wait, let me go back. Sorry, guys. So here's the difference between a stall and an objection. And I'm going to use a road trip as an analogy. So if you are in a neighborhood, that's usually where you have a speed bump, right? Like it'd be really weird to have a speed bump out on the highway. So I want you to think of a stall as a speed bump. Think of that analogy. And it's because stalls occur in the first 30 seconds of a phone call. So if you get something and you think it's a stall and you are five minutes into the conversation, it is not a stall. A stall occurs at the beginning of the conversation and just like you hit a speed bump in a neighborhood. So you think of it like a speed bump. An objection is more a problem to be solved. So if any of you live near Atlanta, and if you don't live near Atlanta, you might've heard about this. What was it? Someone set fire to some construction tubes or something under a major bridge in downtown Atlanta and the bridge collapsed. So imagine the, the traffic issues, right? So that would be more of an objection. It's a problem to be solved, something you have to detour around. So a stall, there's only three kinds. Stall would be, oh, it's a bad time, I can't talk. Or, hey, can you just can you just shoot me an email? Um, if they ask that later on, that's probably not a stall, but if it's, again, first 30 seconds, can you just shoot me an email? They're just trying to brush you off the phone. Or if they say I'm no longer interested, depending on how they came to you. So here's how you handle it in a very tactful way that's not rude, it's not obnoxious, it's very, very tactful. And sorry, I have a weird sunspot that has appeared on my face. <laughs> okay, so first you're gonna welcome it. You're going to welcome it. And you're just going to say, hey, I'm really glad you told me. So if I call Jason and he says, oh, I'm actually really busy. Can you call me later? I'm going to just say, hey, I'm really glad you told me. Just really fast. Then number two, I'm going to ask a question about it. And in our example, we're just going to say, well, when is better? And everybody hear this real quick. Let's say that I asked Susan, I'm going to stand up to get the sun off my face for you guys. Let's say that I asked Susan, when is better? And she's like, tomorrow. I'm not gonna belabor it by when tomorrow? Tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow morning? Because I want you to picture that this lady is actually trying to hang up on you right now, okay? So if you belabor when is better to nail down a specific time, they're probably just gonna hang up on you, okay? So then you're gonna go on to step three, which is just straight into motivation. And I have several options on the screen. We're focusing on it's a bad time, I can't talk because we have 30 minutes for this webinar. So what this would sound like is, hey, I'm really glad you told me when is better. And then, hey, just in 30 seconds or less, what has you thinking about moving? And what a lot of times will happen, you all have done this, right? Have you ever been leaving work or leaving church or leaving you know, a restaurant? Kind of on a mission, especially if you're a high D personality type on disc, like you're on a mission, right? And if someone stops and says like, hey, how are the kids or how's business? What do we do? Kind of like give them a quick answer if you're in a hurry. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Or how many times have you thought like, I know I'm going to be late now, but I don't care. I feel like talking about this. <laughs> and you just stay and you keep talking. Well, that's what, that's what a lot of times the lead will do. And again, they, use, they actually probably have time to talk anyway. So what we want to do is get them talking about themselves and a lot of times, if they start talking about themselves, they'll just stay on the phone with you. They'll just totally stay on the phone with you. Here's what you don't want to do. If they start engaging with you, don't remind them by saying like, oh, I remember you said you're busy. I'm going to let you go. If they just start engaging with you, you just keep going. Okay. 
So would someone role play with me? And what I wanna do is give you my opener to demonstrate that one more time. And then I want one of whoever volunteers here after I do my opener so I can get through it, just say, hey, it's a bad time. Call me later and I'll demonstrate the stall pattern. So who would do that for me? Susan, okay, Susan, go for it. So Susan, I'm gonna do my opener. Um, people can interrupt you at any point, but I want you to let me get through it since someone said, can you repeat your opener? <laughs> so I'm gonna, let me get through it. And then, uh, and then we'll go from there. So, um, hey Susan, this is Anna Calm from the Haro Group, Keller Williams. Hey, thank you so much for taking my call today. Okay. And I'm calling because I saw you were on our website and I'm so curious, what has you thinking about moving? Um, actually, this really is not a good time. Um, okay. I'm really glad you told me that, Susan. When is better? Uh, the, uh, what's today? Uh, tomorrow afternoon. Okay. And then just, hey, in 30 seconds, or, and by the way, I didn't belabor that, right? Just, okay. And then, hey, in 30 seconds or less, what has you thinking about moving? Um, the timing is about right. Okay. And when you say the timing is about right, what makes that right for you? Uh, my husband's retired and um, I'm looking for a new career and okay. I, we have an idea of where, what we want to do. So That's awesome. So how will moving help you with your career decisions? And then pause. You would just keep going. Okay. So, so question. hold on. Let me say this real quick and then you can go, Susan. Once they engage with you, you just keep asking open-ended questions about their motivation. Because remember, they probably have time to talk to you. So don't remind them that they said they were busy, <laughs> but that's how you do it. That's how you do it. All right, Susan, what was your question? If it does get cut short, you know, like if she really doesn't, do I call tomorrow afternoon? Yes. So let's say, so here's the beautiful thing is let's say that Susan really is busy or maybe she's just really holding her ground and not talking to me. Um, what they usually do is they'll say something like, I want to downsize, but like I said, I'm, I'm really busy. But now what I can do tomorrow is call Susan. She already gave me a window to call her. And now I can say, hey, um, I know, Susan, that you mentioned you were really interested in downsizing. So now I'm immediately more interesting, intriguing, want to talk to me. We have some rapport because I'm not flying blind anymore. So what I find is I usually get at least a snippet of information. Sometimes they just totally stay on the phone with you. And then you, you get the appointment. So this is a true story. If you're in the class mastering and said sales, you've heard this, so just humor me, okay? Um, but this is a true story. Years ago, I had a lady call in. She told me she was busy. I said, great, did the pattern. She ended up staying on the phone with me. And I think she took her phone and did the whole thing where she like put it on her shoulder. You know how we do that, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think she knew I could hear her. <laughs> she goes, honey, I don't really wanna to talk to this girl. And this is how she said it. She goes, but she is good. And she said it <laughs> just like that. It made me laugh because she was like really dramatic about it. And she's like, I really, I, I do want to actually go meet her. Well, she was under contract within 24 hours on a house, but she started with, oh, I'm really busy. You know, can you just, can you just call me later? So that pattern, I want you to think about this for just a minute. What would one commission check earn you and put it in the chat box? What's a commission check for you? You all live in different parts of the country with different price points. What's a commission check? And so my next question for you is, do you think that if you practice this for 20 minutes, do your opener and stall together, if you practice that for 20 minutes for the next seven days, do you think you could get one appointment? I see a lot of you nodding your head. Now, obviously, you know, sometimes you need two or three appointments to actually get a closing. But can you see, let's say it takes you three appointments set to get a closing. That's kind of normal. I see like a $15,000 commission check. What if you look at it like I earn $5,000 for every appointment I, I set? Because I have to set three to get a $15,000 commission check. So basically practicing this, you just earn $5,000 in a week. You see what I'm saying? So when I teach this, <laughs> Whitney, I love it. So when I teach this, uh, I'm sorry? When is the class that you teach? The class, I was just about to say that, so thank you. So the class is called Mastering Inside Sales. I've considered changing it to Mastering Lead Gen, uh, but for now we're sticking with Mastering Inside Sales. And it's really for agents and ISAs that talk to humans and want to turn them into clients, okay? Uh, we have team leaders in there. We have rainmakers in there. 
So when is it? Events, we have ISAs. You sold it me already. Eleventh, it, it launches on November third. <laughs> it launches on November third, and the link is masteringinsidesales.com. That redirects you to Maps. It, we just wanted to make it easy for you to find it. So masteringinsidesales.com starts in about two and a half, two and a half, three weeks, November third. Okay. And we do 18 language patterns, 19 language patterns. So you just got two, but in actual class, we spend way more time on those. So you get 19 language patterns. I give you four different tracking systems. I actually give you the trackers and you can have two people per registration, but you have to be from the same team. Okay. Um, so it's a pretty good deal. The class used to be 800 a month before COVID. And when COVID happened, I was like, maps, can we make it 199 so more people can afford it? And they said, yes. So it's a class that used to cost $600 more a month than it does right now. I thought that was really awesome that we were able to change it. So $199 a month, six months, masteringinsidesales.com, March or uh, November 3rd. Perfect. Okay, what questions do you have? We have two minutes. So what questions do you guys have? By the way, I see a lot of you from class and it's great to see you. Like NJ, Joseph, nice to see you guys. Okay, so what questions do you guys have about what we talked about today? Or takeaways, I love takeaways. I have a question. Yes. Sometimes you can get people on the phone, like investors, people yeah. that are really, um, what's the word? I guess kind of, they're used to doing this. They're used to dealing with, you know, a real estate agent. Right. And it's harder to lock in on appointments with people like that. They just kind of want you to send them information. And if they want to see something, how do you kind of, um, I just experienced this today. So yeah, I've been trying to figure out how can I kind of fix that? How can so I go here's, back? Here's what I recommend. And I'm kind of cutting you off, Whitney, just because I know we're, we got like one minute. I hope that's okay. That's nice. Um. So what I recommend is use their words in their next question and keep it open-ended about their motivation, okay? We didn't really get into that today, but that's actually class one of Mastering Inside Sales. We spent an hour on questions. Um, but I had, a, I had an investor, actually, his name is Stan. And I did the, he gave me a stall. I remember this call, like it just happened because it, it, it was a big one. He called in and said, I'm, I live in California and I want to buy in South Carolina because it's so much cheaper there. And my goal, guys, listen, my goal is to buy 250 houses in the next five years. And I'm thinking, do not jack up the phone call. Like, do not mess up the phone call. <laughs> so I, I stayed to the training, right? You have to stick to the training. And he gave me a stall and all this stuff. And um, at the end, he's like, I don't know what it is because I talked to a lot of people. You're the only one I'm willing to meet with. Well, what I had been doing the whole call is if he said, I want, and I don't remember what it was now, but if he said, you know, I want an investment property, what about an investment property is important to you? Well, I really want to have wealth. Okay. Tell me what wealth would do in your world. And basically Whitney, it was taking his words and turning them into another question. And when you use someone's words, they call that keyword backtracking. It mm -hmm. helps you get into rapport. So he didn't know what was going on. I honestly wasn't even thinking about it a ton because it just had practiced it so much, but that's what happened. And then at the end, he said, I don't know what it is, but you're the only one I want to meet with. And the guy bought a house. I drive by a house that he bought from us on a regular basis because it's on the corner. <sighs> Sorry, bug just yeah. on me. Um, okay, so we are at time and I want to respect your time. If you would like a moment of peace, I'll show you. Can you see it? Oh, it's like too bright. Oh, uh, it? There it is. Beautiful. Yay. Oh, wow. Yay. Isn't that pretty? It's beautiful. So, um, you all just came awesome. on vacation with me for a second. Where are you? I'm in uh, Lake Lore, North Carolina. Oh, okay. And someone was on here a couple weeks ago when I was in a teepee. I saw you coming. It's so nice to see you again. I travel a lot right now. <laughs> all right, guys. So, masteringinsidesales.com. And hopefully I'll see you in class November 3rd, uh, 199 a month for six months. Basically, you're just under 1200 I think we can all agree if you just implement one of these things, you will earn that back multiple times over, okay? The trick is you have to show up and participate. If you sign up and then forget about the class or you don't show up and actually practice, then don't sign up. But if you're ready to sign up, practice what you're learning, um, put in effort between the calls, you will absolutely see a benefit. All right, guys. Thanks for Thanks, hanging out with me today. See you soon. Okay, bye, bye, guys.